Did you know that Apple still sells optical drives? I'm pretty surprised myself in typical Apple fashion. It isn't USB-C, hasn't been updated in forever, and Apple doesn't even list the tech specs for it on the product page like what media it supports or its read-write speeds, although you can find this info on things like Apple-related wikis. Worst of all, they charge $79 for it. But you can find these guys for $20 on eBay, so I bought one. I'm going to level with you guys. You can't just make a video about this because there's not that much to say. This is part review, part tech curiosity, part how-to, and part travelogue. What I'm trying to say is this is going to be an unusual video and I hope you guys enjoy it. I promise the travel stuff will be pretty minimal and there's chapters if you want to skip it. I am right now driving to sunny Astoria, Oregon and obviously that's a bit facetious because it is on the Oregon coast and the Oregon coast is overcast, especially this time of year. However, the weather says it's actually supposed to be sunny, which is amazing because Astoria only gets 127 days of sunshine a year. I grew up on the southern Oregon coast, which is practically tropical, well, not by weather or temperature, but by days of sunshine, as it averages 190 plus days of sunshine a year, making it two more months a year of sunshine. That's quite a bit when you really get down to it. Astoria is probably most known for being the filming locations for Free Willy, Goonies, Kindergarten Cop, and Short Circuit. It is also the oldest European settlement in the Pacific Northwest, and it's the end destination for the Lewis and Clark Expedition. And ironically, it's actually sunny there today. As much as I'd like to play tour guide all day, you're here for the tech. This drive has been selling since 2008 as an accessory to the first MacBook Air, and as far as I can tell, Apple hasn't changed this design in 15 years. This very well might be the longest selling product Apple's ever had outside of Apple's 30 pin to USB cable, which has been on the market since 2003. To be quite frank, like most people, I don't have a ton of use for an optical drive, and when I need one, my Mac Pro 2008 has one, or it had one, it's been dying for some time, and since I've been doing a lot of retro computing suddenly, I found that having a DVD-RW drive to be somewhat useful. The nice thing is Apple still natively supports optical media and Mac OS, although this statement needs a bit of clarification as Apple never really bothered fully supporting Blu-ray beyond data. While it'd be absurd to pin the death of optical media on Apple, they certainly chose not to support Blu-ray for reasons. The Apple USB Super Drive does not support Blu-ray and is DVD and CD only. If you wanted to watch The Goonies in HD, you could attach a Blu-ray drive to your Mac and use VLC, but I imagine most people just stream Astoria's finest. If you've watched my channel for a while now, you probably picked up I love beer. And Astoria is home to several great breweries, and part of my reason for visiting is to check out its latest addition to their beer scene, Obelisk. It's by the former barrel master of Fort George, and also I'm going to go to Fort George as well. Using the USB Super Drive with modern USB-C Max just requires a simple adapter. Plug it in and you're ready to start burning discs. I found out when I plugged it into some USB hubs, it just wouldn't power up. So the most surefire way to get it to work is to plug it directly into the USB ports on your Mac. This device is small, but there are smaller drives out there, and I'll come back to that in a second. It doesn't have a physical eject button, which is certainly a, a choice. And the cable is hardwired to the drive, which is quite frankly, not good. Its speeds are fairly standard. It looks nice, but as far as products go, Apple put about as much effort into this as they did with the Magic Mouse. I imagine at this point in time, most people are a bit hazy on how to burn a disc, so let's do a turbo refresher. All it takes in Mac OS to burn an ISO is a right click when a drive is present, but in my black MacBook 2006 video, I demonstrated the limitations of trying to burn Linux ISOs. So a open source utility like Burn, link in the description, are necessary if you're looking to copy certain types of content and have them remain fully intact. 
If you want to burn, say, a folder of data, you can by right-clicking from the finder or create a burn folder. To be honest, I totally forgot about burn folders. They're temporary folders that don't actually move or copy or duplicate any of your data prior to burning. So you're not wasting valuable disk space with duplicate files or having to move files around. There are still utilities out there like Toast that assist making DVDs that are playable in a standard DVD player. But for the Mac, I have a feeling most people are likely just using DVDs at this point in time for data archival purposes. The SuperDrive isn't the only game in town for slim DVD RWs, as you can find models from LG, Asus, and Dell for under $30 brand new, as well as some brands I've never ever heard of for much cheaper. Pretty much all of these are compatible with Mac OS and will behave the same as Apple's USB SuperDrive, but they aren't slot loading, which can be viewed as a positive as the SuperDrive doesn't have a way to force eject stuck disks. Also, as a refresher, there are multiple types of media like DVD minus R and DVD plus R and DVD minus RW and DVD plus DL. And I'm not even going to break down all of these, but just be aware there might be some compatibility issues with media, especially if you're trying to read certain burned disks with very old drives. This drive is a relic and it's easy to scoff at optical media as it's much less convenient. But on the flip side, there's a reason to be nostalgic for this era as you actually own copies of the media that couldn't be taken away from you or changed after the fact. Sadly, it's become somewhat common to pull controversial episodes of popular TV shows from streaming services, or movies and TV shows being re-edited to remove controversial sequences, or merely TV shows losing the rights to the original soundtracks and thus having the music replaced with generic songs. Much like the movies that were shot in Astoria, optical media is a vestige of a pre-perpetually online world, and it's a world that I'm surprised Apple hasn't completely disavowed. If it weren't for game consoles, I have a feeling most of us wouldn't have touched an optical drive in years, and I have a feeling it won't be long before most people no longer even own optical media. On that note, I'm going to finish this beer, and I thank you for watching. I didn't claim these were the best films ever made, or even the best ones made in Oregon.